Yes, we've got a very big guest today, Jason Scotland, the strongest man in the world, <laughs> easily, mate. How are you, all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks right. for having me. That's a yeah. pleasure, mate. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Uh, I was telling him before, strongest man I've played against. I ran into him playing against Stenos Muir and it was like running into my missus, mate, honestly. <laughs> 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 but, she wouldn't be happy with that, no. would she? <laughs> I'll be at the house, mate. Obviously, you're working with the young kids, but on to you. How was your uh, football upbringing as a kid in Trinidad? <sighs> It just was just crazy. It was good. It was good for me in the sense of uh, having uncles, brothers who play football. You know, they, they always play on my mom, you know, as a, as a young kid, taking me to go and see them play. Mm -hmm. You know, so and, and me growing up knowing uh, that's football and, and that's what I had to do, really. You know, I play other sports, fit, uh, maybe basketball, maybe tennis, you know, but it wasn't really my passion, I would say. You know, football was one of the passions that that my mom keep taking me to and you know, you always keep going back and keep going back and watching my uncles play, so it, it was good. Who was your heroes growing up? Uh, I would say Ian Rush, you know, we used to Ian see... Ian Rush, right, uh-huh. used to see um, the Premier League on, on Saturdays and Sundays, so we used to see Ian Rush, you know, but locally we used to see Dwight York, you know, I can remember watching the, I think it was 96, 97 um, Coca-Cola Cup. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can remember it, um, at Wembley, Dwight York scored in, scored in that. Aston Villa? Aston Villa, yeah. Uh, yep. um, so obviously he was my hero as a local guy, you know, playing in, in, in Europe. Uh -huh. And did you, did you eventually play with Dwight York? I eventually played with him. I eventually played with him, went to the World Cup, had um, World Cup qualifiers with him as well. Uh -huh. Top you man? Know, so he was top man, he was good top guy, man, yeah. he was good. Him and Russell, obviously, he was the two senior guys, uh -huh. so he was good. Just on Ian Rush, is that why you used to have that naughty moustache that you had? <laughs> <laughs> that was a shock, wasn't it? <laughs> no, not really. No, it was just nothing really, but you know, it was just something. Something maybe go November, you know, but it wasn't really any thinking about you and Rush really. Yeah. It was just having a good banter, you know. Having a good time, mate, exactly. So how did the how did the trial at Dundee United come about? Um I was playing in Trinidad, playing for Defence Force, the top team in Trinidad, and you know, I was doing well with the national team. I think we played Dundee, you know, we played Dundee. For some strange reason Dundee was was in Trinidad. I think I scored double against them. You know, I was doing really well, and, and maybe two weeks after, I got a trial at, at Tanadai's. You know, it was shocking, but I was doing well, so, you know, I was, I was happy. You know, and two weeks later, I was at Dundee. Uh -huh. How, what was your first impressions of Dundee as a place? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Dundee, I remember. What you <laughs> <laughs> you're from Dundee. Um, it was good. To be fair, it, it really wasn't about the place. You know, it was about me just trying to earn a contract. You know, um, obviously I'm living in Scotland now and I would think about Dundee. Mm -hmm. I would think, uh, but at the same time, you know, it was just me trying to earn a contract. Two week trial at Dundee United, you know, and, and just trying to knock along and trying to earn a contract. How were the boys with you? The boys that were already at Dundee United? Sorry? How were they with you? Were they good with you? When you were on trial? They were good. They were good. They were good with me. Um, Russell was there at the time. Russell Arapi? Yeah, Russell uh -huh. Arapi was there at the time. I was on trial, and I was on Tuesday night on trash, and I was on trial. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, <laughs> trash nightclub in Glasgow? Yeah, trash nightclub in Glasgow, <laughs> and I was on trial, you know, so... <laughs> I can remember um, going on a Tuesday night, um, Tuesday night, or maybe a Wednesday night, maybe, I can't remember what night. Trash Tuesday it was, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I had training the next morning. Russell said, just always sleep and you'll be all right, and I was on trial. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was, it was some times that, you know, that I will never forget, you know, but it, it was good times anyway. Uh -huh. So did Russell Lappy take you under his wing straight away? Yeah, he took me under his wing straight away. It was um, me and, and Devon Mitchell, was two guys at, at, at Dundee United on trial at that time. You know, and he take us under wings because obviously we come from Trinidad way, he's born and, and grew. So he take us under wings and, and try to show us, show us the roof and, you know, tell us to, to do well, you know, just work harder. Uh -huh. And how good the player was he? Uh, he was magnificent. He was he was one of the greatest players, you know, that I played against. She had dressing room against, you know. He was so class on the ball, you know, and uh, he tells a story always, you know, you carry the piano, I will play it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. You know, so so uh, when did you get told you were getting a contract on the United? After the two weeks? After the two weeks. After the two weeks, um, was me and Devon Mitchell, as I say, and, and they pulled me in, you know, and, and talked to me before. And then saying that they're going to offer me a contract, and honestly, yeah, it was it was the best feeling that I could ever imagine. Really, you know, after that they pull because I think Devon Mitchell was doing all right. You know, they pull him in, 
and tell him, you know, obviously he's not going to be winning a contract, you know. Um, but it tell because during the time we come, I think we, we land in Glasgow maybe half 11 or something like that. And we went straight to Falkirk. I can remember this like it was yesterday. And we played a, a, a bounce game straight after. Straight off the plane? Sh straight off the plane. Yeah. Played a bounce game in Falkirk. I think it was Falkirk old, old ground or something. And I can remember scoring one and, and setting up one. We went 2-1 or something like that. And I keep... Remember telling him that day, it was freezing. It was it was February or something like that. It was absolutely freezing. But it's time for me to win a contract, you know, coming from Trinidad. And, and he he didn't want to play. He had on gloves, three, four gloves in his hand, maybe under tights as well, yeah. you know. So I'd say, listen, you're here to win a contract. So it's something that, you know, and, and, and that time knowing that he was not fight, he really didn't want to win that contract. Mm -hmm. You know, so when he come out of that, that, that office, seeing McCall, I know it probably didn't go well for him. So you think that plays a big thing? You coming over here and just no gloves, shorts on, right in it? I think it played a big part. Yeah. Um, just the attitude, seeing that you're willing to work. Uh, it's, a, it's a workman like place in Scotland when you're playing in Scotland. They always say, Russell said that me in the dressing room just work hard. You know, so as long as you work hard and you show the right attitude, you have a big chance. Mm -hmm. One thing I wanted to ask you is how did you find it, a Scottish dressing room coming for, for Trinidad? Oh, oh, oh my word. <laughs> Scottish dressing room, done the United. <laughs> had some big characters as well. Um, we had Charlie Miller, mm -hmm. we had Charlie Russell, Russell. Uh -huh. yep. we had um, Barry Robson, Barry we, had Billy, yeah. uh -huh. we had Billy Dodds, we yeah. had Jim McIntyre, Andy McLaren. Oh. <laughs> to be fair, for me coming from Trinidad, I'm going to Trinidad in, in training, I'm going with our shorts, I'm going with our t shirts because it's warm. So I come here now going with our shorts. And a t-shirt. Uh, numerous occasions. My clothes just hanging up just straight after the door. <laughs> you don't know who's done it. Charlie. 100%. <laughs> you know Charlie's done it. 100%, man. You know, so it was, it, was, it was good. You know, because I was young as well. You know, Jim McIntyre, take me under his wing. When I obviously signed, you know. Yeah. Um, Billy Dodds, obviously I was a striker as well. Take me under his wing. You know, Charlie, take me under his wing. Charlie even picked me up, you know, he used to pick me up because we used to say in, in Brody Ferry, Charlie and I can remember, Big Archibald, Alan yeah, Archibald, Archibald, yeah, yeah, Alan yeah. Archibald, he used to pick me up on, on mornings, every morning, uh, living in the ferry, every morning I would maybe run out a mile before I actually get in the car. Why? Charlie, oh, they would drive away? Oh, oh. <laughs> every morning, <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> just go on man, just go on, <laughs> I'll run, I'll go on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning, I'm on one side, me and, um, and, and Colin Simon stay together. Uh -huh. you know, I'm on one side, Colin on the other side. Trying to get Charlie! Charlie! <laughs> <You're just gone. laughs> hey, well, but you know, he, he looked after us. He uh -huh. brings us to training every day, you know, until we, we obviously buy a moto, but he looked after us in that way. The manager as well, Ian McCall, how is he? Because he's been known to lose the plot, is he? <sighs> Angry guy? Angry guy, angry guy, yeah. angry guy. I, I can remember playing a reserve game after I play on a Saturday because he was, he was always on my back. He was always on my back trying to get more, trying to get more. I maybe done all right on a Saturday. I maybe play 60 minutes, for the first 65 team, minutes says, yeah, the first uh -huh. team. And I, I wasn't good enough. He's like, he wasn't good enough. And he's just angry. He just got to in the dressing room. Oh, you're playing on Monday. I'm on, on a reserve game on, on Monday at 4 for at Station Park. So he was just angry. But I look back at it maybe in my, in my playing days and still think he just wanted the best out of his players. You know, he was just, he was still an angry guy, but he just wanted so much out of his players. You know, yeah. he just, no players have so much to offer, you know, but he was still an angry guy saying that anyway. Uh -huh. yeah. See, when your manager is like that, and obviously there's big cards in the dressing room, was there times that you felt a bit down, being away from home and no playing, playing reserves? It, it, it feel a bit down because, obviously, I come to play first team football, and I wasn't playing first team football, I was playing reserve, but the good thing I had, um, Colin Simon next to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I had Colin Simon next to me and, and two of us could bounce off each other. You could go to Fat Sam's on a, on a oh, Tuesday night as well. What a place, mate. Eh? <laughs> you know, what a place. Yeah, you could go to Fat Sam when, when we're down, you know, on a Tuesday <laughs> night. <laughs> you know, so it was good in that sense. You know, it was sometimes you get frustrated not being home, but you know, it's an objective. You're, you're trying to do well in, in your career. And if maybe if Colin wasn't there, you know, maybe I might have think about going back home or be homesick, but Colin was right. We stayed in the same flat in, in the ferry. 
You know, so so it was good. I won't ask you what happened in that fight. <laughs> nah, <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> but the first season, top six finish, I think five goals you got. Mm. Um, see, when you were in the plane, would you go and see the manager and ask why? No, not really. No, I wouldn't because it was not in our nature growing up in Trinidad. Mm. It's in the nature in Scottish football. They, they straight in when, when they're in a plane. But it wasn't in my nature to go and ask why I'm in a plane. I would just keep working out, just trying to get any team. Even if he take me off or something, sometimes some players could go and say, why you take me off? I'm, I've been doing well. You know, they could say maybe it's a tactical. But I never ever once go in the, the manager's office. Uh, why? Yeah, it, it was just, just the way you've been brought up. It's just the way I've been brought up. So do you think that's a good thing with Scottish people or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Um, I learned that, obviously, living in Scotland and, and playing, in, playing abroad. After, I never had the, maybe to go and say that. Really, he's only maybe at maybe Hamilton, you know, maybe at, at Wigan. Yeah. But I never really had to go and do it because most of the teams I played after the United, I was actually the you main man. You were the top man, uh, exactly. Was playing. <laughs> so 2004, 2005, bit up and down. I think he's finished ninth that year and Ian McCall lost his job. Mm. You remember, remember when Ian McCall was sacked? I can't remember much about it. I can't remember much about it really. Were you a wee bit so, sad with the guy that signed you had been sacked? I was, I was because obviously, as I said, he signed me, you know, he gave me the, the chance, you know, and to, to, to go forward and it was sad, you know, and obviously he just says goodbyes, you know, but me learning and, and, and the senior players in the dressing room was just saying we need to get on with it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that we do. Uh -huh. And Gordon Chisholm came in? How yeah, Gordon he? Chisholm, Gordon Chisholm, uh, he was good. He was good to me when he was a coach, first team coach, you know, so it, it wasn't any different. You know, he, he still tried to push me as, as much as, as he could, you know, he tried to push me. I, I think I was maybe more in the team that season, the second season than Colin Samuel, mm -hmm. you know, so he was trying to obviously push me more, you know, which was good. But Chisholm was, was, was a top man anyway. Uh, you liked yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was the second season you got to the Scottish Cup final. That must have been good. Two years in Scotland and you're in a Scottish Cup final, you must have been pinching yourself, no? I was, I was, um, I think, I think, is it Celtic we played in Scottish Cup, yeah? Is yeah. It Celtic, yep. Yeah. I think I scored the, the, the winner against Hibs. I think I scored the winner against Hibs, um, which was a special moment, you know, before the City Cup, the, the, the Scottish Cup final. So that was a special moment playing, playing right here at Hampton, you know, was... 50,000 people. 50,000 people, something that I never experienced in my life, you know, just get goosebumps, really, posers. So it was, it was something special that... I can't recall on the day because it was so nerve-wracking, you know, to, to come out here and, and all the fans cheering. I never see so much done the United fans in my life, uh -huh. you know, so <laughs> we had about maybe 15, 10, 15,000, you know, so it was nerve-wracking at that time, but it was something, you know, to cherish. Were you a player that used to get nervous for games? I used to. I used to get nervous and stuff for games. If you don't get nervous, come on, this uh -huh. is something, something wrong. I used to get nervous, but when the first ball kick, you know, that's it, all the nerves moves away and you're just ready to go. And did your family watch the final in Trinidad? I don't think so. I don't no. think so. It's something that I never really think about. I don't think they watch the Getty final. Uh, I just tell them about it, really. You know, yeah. I didn't I didn't think the, the Getty final, but I think we, we lose 1-0 or something. I can't remember too, too vaguely. And then straight to Fat Sam's? Straight to Fat Sam's. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's forgotten about Fat Sam's. <laughs> no, well, you know, it's, it was a big achievement at the time because we finished ninth, ninth last season, uh -huh. you know, to, to, to get the Scottish Cup final, you know, in Hampton, it was a big achievement for the United because we were struggling, you know, that season. So, so it was good, you know, somebody, that is the moment when, obviously, first Scottish Cup final, you know, that I'll cherish. Uh -huh. Great memories. Yeah. Uh, one thing I de definitely need to ask you about is, you're the only guy I ever know that's got a work permit rejected. You got a, crim <laughs> yeah, a criminal, what is it? You got convictions, <laughs> oh, what no, is it? Maybe a criminal, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you remember, do you remember, yeah, I remember that, that, that moment? I, I remember that moment. I remember that moment for... I was coming from Florida. Trinidad and Tobago, had a, we played in the Gold Cup, played against America, Mexico. We, we, we played in the Gold Cup and I can remember landing at maybe Gatwick or Heathrow, one of the airports. And I was saying, the immigration officer, son, you're not allowed in the country, son. It's like, what? <laughs> I was like, I was absolutely... Sh I was like... Think he's having a laugh or something. Uh -huh. You can say shit. You know? It's fine how you say it. Yes, all right, okay, all right. <laughs> and then no, he, then he say, uh, just wait a minute. And just I just had to sit down for I probably sit down for maybe about two hours, you know. And then after I get up and say, what's going on here? And they say, well, your work permits expire, and you're not allowed in the country. I was like, I was like, 
everything in my heart just absolutely sank. Because mm-hmm. I'm thinking, that is my career. You know, that was obviously two years work permit and two years of grafting at, at Dundee United. I'm thinking, that's it. You know, um, I think they end up playing me in the country. They end up playing me in for a week. You know, and obviously get my stuff sorted and stuff in, in Dundee and, and, and went back to Trinidad. You know, so when my work permit got rejected, I was, I was absolutely surprised because mm-hmm. I think I was, I was doing all right. You know, um, as I say, I scored 10 goals in two seasons, but it was difficult coming from Trinidad to play in, in, in this league in to settle, uh, yeah, to settle yeah. you know, but I think I was, was doing all right. I think the second season I done all right. So when I heard the book permit was denied, it was something that thinking that could be in my career. Uh-huh, so you actually thought this could be the end of my yeah, career? Yeah, I actually uh-huh. thought because I was back in Trinidad and I was back in Trinidad, I stayed probably two or two, maybe one or two weeks maybe in Trinidad and it was thinking, what are I going to do next? I probably was trying to get maybe local clubs you know, join a band of Marvin Andrews a, or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but I think after after two weeks or something like that, I think um, I was thinking, that is it, man. That is it. I don't think I'm going back to to Scotland again. You know, I was just thinking it's it's over. And uh, and what was that? A phone call from Owen Coyle? Was it, it was a phone call from from Owen Coyle. It was a phone call. Maybe two weeks. Maybe. Just out the blue? Just out the blue, because I played with Owen Coyle, I played a lot of reserve game with the United and stuff. And just out the blue, a phone call. I don't know how he had my local number. <laughs> just a phone <laughs> He's call. He's playing the gobbles, mate. You can get anything, Owen Coyle. Owen Coyle. I don't even know how he had my local number. And he phoned me, he phoned me up and, and said, fancy come and play with St. Johnson. I was like, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh. After, after the phone call, I can't remember what I ended up doing. I was just so delighted. I probably run outside naked or something like that. I, just <laughs> run up I was just delighted thinking it's a lifeline. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And I know it was obviously a uh, championship. It was League One at the time. But it was just something just to get me back. You know, get me back playing professionally in Scotland, you know, because I enjoyed my time two years, you know. But I think about that after I come off the phone. You know, I say, yeah, I'll gladly um, come and play. And I think after that, the... Uh, the maybe a week after they applied for the work permit and it was successful mm-hmm. you know and looking back at it now the saying that I wasn't good enough for the Scottish Premier League you know so it did, was, that, did that spur you on the, the, the board saying that you were yeah good it, it's put on it's put on a lot because having to think about it it was I scored five goals that season and four was against or three was against Hibs right and the guys on the panel was four guys from Hibs was on the panel so you, you think know? that's why you never so, got so it? I, I always said that's why I never got it. I, oh. I said it against Hibs when we beat, beat them in the playoff for, with Hamilton, you know, and, and the guys said it, they would still vote against me. So I think it was three guys, three or four guys on the panel, you know, so... That's you proved them wrong, big man. Wrong, uh-huh. proved them wrong. So you thought Dundee was yeah. by and then you end up in Perth? Oh, oh my <laughs> word! <laughs> you can pick them, can't you? I can pick them, can't you? <laughs> Ice Factory, was it? Oh. <laughs> I spent two months. That whole year. You enjoy that? <laughs> You've been about this. <laughs> I know, man. How did you find Don Coyle as a manager? So he's a very upbeat guy, isn't he? He's he's very upbeat guy. He's so superstitious. Um, Is he right? I, uh, he's so superstitious. We we would do one session this week. We would win. 100% percent we be doing the same session whole week <laughs> next week. 100% we be doing that. If you get a haircut this week and we win, he's going to take a haircut <laughs> in another week. <laughs> Honestly, so he was so superstitious, but he was, he was good. He was good for us. He was good for me. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, bringing me in, you know, after Dundee United, he, he played with me, obviously, and it was good. You know, he, he, he always tell me, don't worry, Chase, don't worry. He used to call me the rocket anyway. The you rocket. Know, the rocket. Uh-huh. You know, Pizzo always called me that. That's the nickname I get from some of the boys at St. Johnson. And he always say, don't worry, rocket. You get five seconds of magic. You know, five seconds of magic could win us the game. Uh-huh. So games that will be absolutely terrible. Terrible. Half time I'll come off. And I'll be absolutely terrible. He's, he's coming. So don't worry, rocket. Five seconds of magic. We win the game. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, uh, it was just how good did, did you did you find that easier to play with a manager who was like that than say an Ian McCall who was shouting at you all the time? It was, it was. I think one of um Owen Coyle strengths was you would say player management. Mm-hmm. You know, he was just always a a, a a people's person. He always deal with the players, you know, the players. I wanted to play for him, you know, because obviously I was playing all the time. So sometimes you don't know if the guys 
who's not playing all the time, if they would were, were happy. But most of the sessions we would we enjoy it, you know. So so it wasn't something that you think uh, he's you don't want to play for him, you know. He's 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 too uptight as I say that Ian McCall. Mm -hmm. He was always relaxed. He was always relaxed. We would play games on a on a Friday for cakes, and it was just mm -hmm. it was just something a place you want to be around, mm -hmm. you know. And it was it was just a different style of management, you know. And and even at, at Burnley, he did well because the players absolutely loved him, mm -hmm. you know. It, Players. Goes a long way, doesn't it? Yeah, it uh, goes a long way. It goes uh, a long way. Did he, did he get you an iron brew? <laughs> he did, to be fair. He did, did he? He did. He did. Always, he always get cans of iron brew. Yeah, always get cans of iron brew. So uh -huh. it, it was good. You know, he loves iron brew. Uh, <laughs> but your first season, you scored 16 goals. Did you find that the championship easier than the SPL? Or was it just because you were more relaxed and settled? It was more relaxed, but it was easier as well. You know, I don't want to knock the championship or league one at the time, but it was, I think the, the two years at Dundee United, more men to, to the player, mm -hmm. you know, so I get accustomed to it now and the, temp, the, the tempo of the game in the championship wasn't as, the, as quick as the, the Premier League, you know, mm -hmm. the Premier League was relentless, it was, it was tough, coming up against, you know, Presley for Hearts, you know, Bobo Bali with Celtic, Amaro mm -hmm. at Rangers, it was... It was tough going, but the championship, it wasn't coming up against that type of quality, mm -hmm. you know, so it was, it was easier, but I was still finding my feet anyway. Were they the three best that you played against SPL, Presley, Bowden, Amoruso? There was, there was ones that I can remember, you yeah. know, Bobo coming up against Big Bobo, it's absolute giant of a man. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, it's absolute Studs giant. are that size, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's just Umbro, can you remember it? Umbro. Like, oh, Umbro studs, man. <laughs> Anybody can remember who played at that time, studs was this, and it was absolutely relentless, man. Mm -hmm. You know, but it, it, it was it was good. It good upbringing, though. Good upbringing for you. Was good upbringing uh, for me. Was yeah. good upbringing. You know, coming up against these these guys, you know, and knowing it could be a, a, a tough challenge. You mm -hmm. know, and thinking, oh, you know, but something that that I think about and still smile about up to this day. Two thousand and six, you got called up to the Trinidad team for a World Cup. Did you expect it? Did you know it was coming? Do you remember the phone call? Talk us through it. I know it was coming. I know it was coming. Um. But for a minute, I was scared Why? because we had a game at, I think we had the last game before the team announced at Loftus Road, but I wasn't in the squad. I wasn't in the squad, so I was, at that time I was thinking, fuck me, boy, didn't make that World Cup squad. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. <laughs> I was in bed at that time, I was, I was home, man. And, I, and I, I can't remember, we, I think we played Iceland, I think. Um, Mav was in his squad, I think. I think basically the starting eleven, but it had other players who, who the, the manager wanted to, to give, you know, a chance, you know, to, to show. And I was just crossing my fingers. The guys who the manager given a chance, hoping they don't do well. Because yeah. honestly, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I need to be in the squad. Sure, you know, I know I wasn't going to start, you know, but I just needed to be in the squad. Uh -huh. You know, and maybe weeks after, I think, maybe, maybe months after, maybe, maybe month, maybe a month after, I get a phone call and say, you know, you're in the squad, you know, and it's a 22-man squad and, and you're going to be going to the World Cup. You know, it was a, a feeling. It was, it was a sense of joy and a sense of relief because in, I'm thinking I could be in or I could be out. Yeah, it, was, it was touch and go because the guys who actually come on in the game again, Loftus Road, they actually did all right. They did that, huh? They did all right. And did they get patched? And they end up getting patched, yeah. you know, and, and obviously I make it, so it was, it was signs of relief anyway. You know, going to the, to the World Cup, it was, it was something to look forward to. How was your uncles and all that? How did they find it? Were they so excited? Yeah, my, uh, my mom, she was absolutely buzzing, you know, my uncles. It was, it was just the talk, you know, because obviously I come from a rough area in Trinidad, and, you know, it was maybe five, ten minutes away from Mav, we were in a rough area, mm -hmm. you know, so it was something to be proud about from a family, really. Brilliant, you know, mate. Excellent. Good. It was a big campaign in Scotland as well, wasn't it? Because yeah, it was, Scotland were at the World Cup. It was a big campaign, um, if you remember that. It was Iron Brew as well. I had a, was had it Iron Brew? Yeah, was it? a big campaign. Um, Scotland going to the World Cup. And you, you played know? England as well, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we played uh -huh. England as well. We played England as well. Um, I don't think I would ever get on. I was on the bench for right. that game. I don't think I would ever get on. Um, but obviously, the campaign in Scotland was hoping that Scotland get on. So, you know, it's Scotland against England, you know, in the World Cup. You know, but we end up getting beat, I think, 2 0 or something. I think Peter Crouch pulled Brent Sancho here. Uh, it was a foul, you know, we reached, we reached uh, I think, the 74th minute. It was 0 0. Right. I think, and 
I think Peter Crouch scoring in the, the 74th minute, 75th minute, or something like that. And it just all went to pieces, you know. But we was we was proud of ourselves anyway, you know, going overseas with England, a big team at, at that time, you know, and we just our first first World Cup, you know, and take them to the 74th minute. You know, the manager, as we said, it, he probably would have changed, changed his plans as well. You know, he probably say maybe go to 70 and then try to go for it. But, uh, you know, but he obviously changed his plans and he just try and sit back still as much as possible and try and contain them. Uh, yeah. How is that World Cup experience? Is it brilliant? It's absolutely brilliant, man. It's something that I could cherish for the rest of my life, really. Just just being there. I know I didn't play. You know, yeah. that, that some people tell me, as you say, oh, I've been to the World Cup. Uh, I didn't play. But some people will say, you've been to a World Cup. You know, a lot of top players haven't been to a World Cup, mm. but sometimes I say, if a lot of top players been to the World Cup, they would have been playing. Uh -huh. You know, so it's a kind of give and take. But it was just a great experience. You know, a great experience. And and funny enough, being at the World Cup, I could remember we playing a game of cricket. You know, in <laughs> training. In training. <laughs> After training, we were just I don't know what happened. We were just going back. We was riding our bikes. Uh -huh. We had we had bikes. You know, from the training ground to our hotel, uh -huh. we had bikes. Maybe. Five minute bike ride, and we were just passing through a, like a, a dust park, you know. And I was thinking, this could be nice for a game of cricket. <laughs> and we end, up, we end up playing a game of cricket, the staff, the players, oh, yeah. and we end up playing a game of cricket. And it was, I just remember that game of cricket, you know, it was absolutely amazing. Man. It was just something in the World Cup that, that I remember. Probably Obviously, yeah, I remember, yeah. remember the football, you know, against Sweden, where we draw 1 1. It was a great result for us, you know, but. It was great. Is Big Marv print? I don't know if he told you, but no, before yeah. every training session, Big Marv said the prayers. Did he, right? After every training, before every training session, we huddle in together. Uh, it's just a Trinidad thing. Uh -huh. You know, we huddle in together, Big Marv said the prayer. After the session's finished, we huddle in together, Big Marv said the prayer. Bro, yeah. So it, was, it wasn't nothing spectacular we know that's what he does uh -huh. you know he pray for us you know for any injuries you know hopefully we can get through this training you know and after the session you know he just thank God for no injuries and, and stuff like that what so, a man, eh? yeah, it's good so at the end of the world cup did you all get a wee night out after it um i can't remember i can't remember really you know no. but it don't take not much for us to get a night out maybe after a game or something like that. Uh -huh. it, it don't take much for us to do that you know, on the to, bikes mate, uh -huh. on the, you know to, to get a night out but I, I can't remember no. getting a night out after really you know yeah. brilliant toy uh, right back to St Johnston 26 goals next season what was that didn't it? was it good players were you just flying was it the confidence of the World Cup a bit of both a bit of everything mixed up I think it was Coming back from the World Cup, a bit of confidence from last season, you know. Thinking you were Dwight York, I heard. Oh, thinking I was Dwight, Dwight York, York. <laughs> thinking I was Dwight York. Let's go on. I think he's got 30 something or something yeah. like that. Thinking I was Dwight York. Um, but I think the confidence from last season, you know, after last season, I knew I was top man. You know, I was going to play all it every week in, week out. You know, so it was something that I would say... I relish really because I was a top man and I was just relishing that challenge, you know, so to score week in, week out, to play week in, week out, you know, but it really wasn't something that I'll maybe relax on. It's just I wanted to play down to the, in the premiership, uh -huh. you know, I wanted to be... Is that always the aim? Is that always, is that, it was always my aim. It was always my aim to get down to the premiership because I say, tell you earlier on, Dwight was in the premiership and watching Dwight on TV, you want to be in the premiership, uh -huh. you know, so it's something that... That was in the back of my mind, you know, to get down south because obviously playing in Scotland to, to get to the Premiership. So scoring 26, is it 26, yeah? 26, yeah, 26 last season. Yeah. It was good. Um, played in, in in League Cup. I think I played in a Scottish Cup semi final that year. Right. With, with St Johnson, I think. I think against Celtic. That's right, that's yep. right. I think I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Bellamy scored in that game, I think. Eh? Um, so it was never Celtic or Rangers, it was always down south. It was. You it to was go. Maybe if Celtic or Rangers come, because in Scotland you want to play for the old firm. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if Celtic or Rangers come, maybe it would, but was always down south, was always my aim. So after I scored, you know, 26, it was, it was just delighted. Uh, see, just quickly on that St. Johnson team, who was, obviously 26 goals, who were the players that would set you up? Was it Pizzo, good player? Peter yeah, Pizzo, yeah, Pizzo yeah. McDonald, Savo was there, Savo. Stephen um, Milner, uh, Yes, Stephen Milner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll keep you right um, there. Uh, keep me right <laughs> Um, Martin Hardy, Martin oh, Hardy Martin was there, Hardy yeah, Martin Hardy was there. there, yeah, Martin Hardy was there, 
Um, Doby was there as oh, well. Oh, Doby, Doby was there. Doby was there. Doby. See, so um, just done Doby at that time. Would you have seen him going on have the career he did? No, I wouldn't see it. Doby was. I, I, I didn't see it. He was big. You know, you everybody oh, told him yeah, he was big. You know, and everybody always tell him to lose weight. He was. He was always a talented player, Doby. Mm-hmm. You know, you see, he always had it in him. You know, me and him was always similar. You know, you know, I had talent, and you know, I was obviously big as well. Mm. But, but you were the rocket, mate. He was, I was the rocket, you know, and <laughs> and you could see he had talent, you know. But obviously, it wasn't working working well for him at that time. So how how uh, far into the season did you know that there was interest for, for other teams? Was it while you were still playing, or was it end of the season? It was end of the season. End of the season. It was interest from Dundee United. They wanted me to come back. Oh really? Yeah, right? Dundee United wanted me to come back. It had interest from Hibs. Because I always go against Hibs yeah, for some reason. It had interest from Hibs. And obviously it had interest from, from Swansea. You know, but I was just thinking one would lead to, to down south. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't in the premiership, but it was it was Wales. You know, but it's something that I was leading up to. You know, I was thinking, um, my mate Dennis Lawrence, he's the, the Trinidad and Tobago head coach now. Yeah. He was he was playing with Swansea, you know, and I talked to him and he said it's a good place to be, it's a good stadium, you know, and he he sold it, sold it to me really, even though he didn't have to sold it to me. I was, I was already on my bike, mm-hmm. you know, because what the bike from the World Cup, the bike from the World Cup. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, 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 <laughs> so there was no, he didn't yeah. sell it to you, huh? But see, just the yeah. last bit on St Johnston. I just one bit I want to ask you: the last day against Gretna, was that a bad way to leave St Johnston? I think Gretna beat you on the last day to win the league. It, it was year. a bad way. It was a bad way. We always talk about the James McGrady score. I think it's James Grady, isn't it? James Grady, yeah. James Grady scored the last minute um, to 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 obviously take them because we was on the pitch. I can't remember we on the pitch. I think it was at Hamilton. We play Hamilton. Yeah. Um, we was on the pitch waiting to to see what the score, and then James Grady last kick of the game score, and we was just. Disappointing, really, you know. And but at that time, I know I was leaving anyway. But it was just a, a bittersweet moment because I know I'm leaving. But it would be good to finish, to finish on a high, mm-hmm. you know. I probably st- I still win that stay, you know. I was always going down always south anyway go because Dundee United was in the Premiership by that time, and I wasn't going there. And Hibs was in the Premiership by that time, and I wasn't going there. So I still win that stay at, at St John's anyway. So was it the Trinidad manager now? Is that when you first heard the Swansea's interest? Was it him that phoned you to tell yeah, you? Yeah, he, he phoned me. He phoned me and, and tell me about the interest, you know. And, and I was just, you know, I think about it. It was League One at that time, you right. know. And I just think it was the best place for me to go. I just wanted to be down there, you know. It's nothing against Scottish football. I just wanted to be in the, in the, in the English Premiership, mm-hmm. you know. And it's something that I was working towards, you know. So it was it was nothing. And he phoned me and he told me they're interested and... and you know, and for my agent, and and so everything materialised. So head down to Swansea, and is it Martinez you meet? Yep, Martinez. Um, how was he the first time you met him? Can you remember what he said to you, or how he was? No, I can't remember the first time I met him. No, I can't remember. He's a soft speaking guy, really calm. You know, just gentle, really. But I can't remember the first time I met him, really. Um, but a lovely I, guy, I so just a lovely guy. I can remember the first time I met Graham Jones, who was the he's assistant, assistant manager. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Welcome, Jace, welcome. He was like, Just straight on, straight on, you're straight away. He's just uh, upbeat, you know. But he was always that kind of bad cup, uh-huh. you know, good cup, bad cup with, 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 um, with Swansea. But I can remember meeting Graham Jones, which he was always, you know, lively guy anyway. Because uh, that was Martinez's first year in management. It was a Could, could you tell man. then that he was going to be special? I couldn't. No, yeah. I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell then. Um, it was difficult at that time for him um, because Why? it wasn't. Diff- it was difficult for the team. So it was difficult for him because when we he come in, we was trying to just play football. Swansea wasn't the team before he come in. You just maybe used to play maybe two or three passes and just go long. Mm. It, so when Martinez come in, he wanted to play a, a, a Pass attractive style, passing right? style of football and. And the fans wasn't happy with that. You know, the, oh, really? they used to boo him and, and stuff like that. It's a boo the, the, the team, obviously, booing him, you know, and obviously just stick with it. You just stick with it, just keep playing and um, the passing football, the possession football, and you know, you just say in the dressing room, you know, this is the football you wanna play. You know, the fans go obviously buy into it. And maybe the back end of the season, we win the league. You know, and, and the fans were absolutely delighted. But the players thinking as well he needs to change this, this isn't working. 
No, I didn't think we was changing because we was flying. We was doing all right. Uh -huh. We was enjoying well. We was enjoying it. Uh -huh. And you know, everybody was was doing their jobs, you know, and we was enjoying it. We was on we was we, we was on top maybe six points early doors. So we was enjoying it. So I don't think the players was, you know, the players obviously buying to what the coach was saying. He didn't buy into really what the fans were saying because we was winning games. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Sorry, yeah. man. Yeah, so we, we was winning games. So the, but obviously the fans, we started winning so much, the fans obviously started buying into it, mm -hmm. which, which was good. Did you enjoy playing that style better than what you'd experienced before? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Were you technically good though? Were you technically yeah, good? Yeah, I was technically good. Uh, yeah, I, was yeah. techni I, I would like to think so. so. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to think so, but obviously playing the style of football in Scotland to where we went on to play Martin, it was, it was different, you mm -hmm. know, and we started off with two strikers, you know, and, and then we started off with, after that, maybe six, seven games, we ended up playing one striker, we ended up playing four, three, three, and he was, he uh, talked to me, Paul Mays, obviously, I'm going to play with one striker now and I'm going to play one up front and he's going to go with me. Because I think me and Daryl Duffy. Daryl Duffy, yeah. Daryl yeah, Duffy was, was the yeah, Scottish guy. He was, he was a friend of me and we used to play um, two strikers and he'd say, you're going to be the main striker. You know, and I was obviously delighted. I was playing from day one, but I was obviously delighted to be the main striker because you're thinking you, you and Daryl Duffy fighting for, for the same position or two of you fighting to stay in the team because you had other strikers. Uh -huh. You know, but I was delighted I was the number one. And you know, I ended up scoring a bag load of goals. Twenty nine goals, mate. Twenty nine goals that season. Was it was it easier to score goals in a passing team? Do you feel like you get create more chances? It was easier. It was easier. It was it, guys who know me. It was like one of these days. I was I was just feeling good. I was just feeling to run, which I don't really run much. <laughs> you know, guys who know man, guys who played with me. I was. I think I ran out to the left channel or something like that. And but I would say, "Jeez, what a fuck." What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing all day? I was like, wow, that's a good run. Him fucking all day. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, it's a decent run. But he's, geez, you're a selfish player. You always play the width of the 18. Mm -hmm. You know, stay in the width of the 18. So it was it was just something that I remember, you know, playing in, in that team. I always score goals in the width of the 18. I hardly make runs outside the channel. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was, it was just... I get a lot of tappings, but I create a lot of goals for myself. You know, Martinez always, you know, tell the players, give me the ball and good solution in and around the box. You know, and, and obviously, I was kind of lucky that season as well. Did you, you know? find the league one quite easy? It was challenging at the time. It was challenging at the time. But the, the, the brand of football we were playing, the style of football we were playing, you know, it, it was easier for me as a striker, as a lone striker. I've seen it with the 18. Get tappings, mm -hmm. end up at twenty nine that season. Brilliant. Who was it? Who was the top players in that team? Leon Britton, what a player! Oh, what a player, man. Well, funny enough, that season he started off playing wide. 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 He played wide uh, left. Right. Cutting on his right foot. The wee short step over. The wee short foot. Short foot guy. <laughs> <laughs> the wee step over and come inside. And then when we changed to um to three in midfield, he ended up playing the, the anchor guy. Um, I think we had Jody Gomez. Yeah, what a player he was, Jordi yeah, Gomez. Joe uh -huh. Joe used to play, but he wasn't a starter at that uh -huh. time because he was a holding midfielder and, and Leon was, was playing that position. Uh, we had Darren Prattley. Uh -huh. Prattley, Prattley was I, good. Yeah, I think he's still ball, playing for Charlton. Uh -huh. um, we had Ferry Bode. Uh -huh. What a player he was oh, as well. What a player he was, man. Dutch guy. Oh, bad injuries he got. Bad uh -huh. injuries. I think it's too crucial or something. Um, we had Andy Robinson, oh, Scouser. I never understand. Andy Robinson, I've had the first time he's a charmier. He's a, he was a charmier. He was a wild guy. Oh, he was crazy. Any man. stories about him? Oh, sorry? Any stories on Andy Robinson? Oh. To be fair, I can understand him, he can understand me <laughs> because he's a Scouser, ain't he? <laughs> so, he's just crazy. It's so many stories, but it's just, can't remember. It's just so long, you know, so long ago, but. He was a good guy. He was he was one of the guys that could ban any dressing room. You know, he he was one of the top guys. In the See guys room. like Leon Britton and Joe Allen. Could you have seen them go, going to the top level? They do, um, they days in League One. I could could have seen Leon. I couldn't see Joe because Joe wasn't in the team. He wasn't a starter. He then. wasn't a starter then. You know, um, I could have seen Leon. You know, I could see Jody Gomez because he had quality. Mm -hmm. I could see Ferry Body, which you know, obviously he get injured. You know. Um, who else we had in the team? I could see Nathan Dyer. We oh, had Nathan, Nathan Dyer, Dyer Lester, yeah. uh, We had Nathan Dyer on, on one side. I could see Nathan doing all right. We had Ashley Williams. A center half. Yeah, a center half. I could see him doing all right. He was strong and powerful. But he's devastated that Martinez left. 
I was, I was devastated because he gave me that responsibility of uh, being top man, being the man in the dressing room, you know, so thinking, who's going to come in next? I was just thinking, hope it's somebody good that can respect me for, for what I do, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously I was the man of the team and uh, I never maybe used to run channels, you know, as, as Bonner say, don't run channels, you know, give Nathan Dyer his space, give maybe Andy Robinson his space, you know, so thinking, oh, this next manager gonna come, I'm gonna be running channels left, right, and center. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, funny enough, Martinez ended up going to Wigan. Uh -huh. You know, I was. See, before he left, did he say, yeah, if I go somewhere, I'll take you with? He didn't. He yeah. didn't. He didn't say that. He didn't. He didn't say that. So it wasn't surprising that he left to go to the Premiership because he done well the second season. I think we we ended up in just outside the playoffs. Playoffs, uh -huh. you know, and and I scored twenty four that season. He, he didn't say that, no. Yeah, I was leaving it to you, mate. I was leaving it to you. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't that surprise that he leave. Um, it was it was summertime. I was on holidays. I was, and I remember this well. I was in Grenada. In where? In Grenada. It's an island, just maybe forty five minutes from Trinidad. Oh right, okay. Yep, I in the Caribbean. It was in no. <laughs> 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 I was I was in Grenada, and I can remember. Um, Coming back from Greenland to Trinidad, I seen Jason Roberts. And he was doing um on the tree work or, or he was talking to other guys or something, and he say, um, Martinez signed for Wigan. I was like, what? I was like, yeah, Martinez, he's like Jason Roberts. He's like saying, yeah, Martinez signed for Wigan. That's you made up, big man. That's you <laughs> went to the premiership. <laughs> Were you thinking that when he went, that's me premiership. So, I was like, I was like, my wife, I was like, whoa. This could be my ticket here. Mm -hmm. I was like thinking, so I was just going on the flight, and that's all I could think about. Because just think about Old Trafford, just think about playing Stamford Bridge. Just, that's all I could think about. Thinking Martinez is going to take me here, hundred percent. He's going to take me here, you know. And and how long did it take for him to uh, phone? It probably take, it'd probably take maybe a week or something because my, my agent was writing it. My agent right. was 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 writing it. But in fairness to my agent, he was just trying to get me because Martinez obviously. Had my top man at 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 um, Swansea, so obviously he could try to get me to. But knowing my agent, he trying to do the work, trying to get me to, to the Premiership, trying to get me to to Wigan. But after talking to Martin, he saying he would take me anyway. You know, he would take me because I done well. You know, and he think I could go up a level. He think the work I did at at, Ipswich, at um, Swansea, he think I could go up a level, which which I, I went up a level. Was there no other offers? Was it only Wigan? Yeah, it was Wigan. No other offers though, from other teams? It had um, Owen Coyle come back in the frame, funny enough. <laughs> he come back in the frame with, with Burnley. Burnley, right? Yeah, and... And, and were they in the me. Premiership as well? They was in the Premiership as well. They was in the Premiership and... and so why did you choose Wigan over Burnley? I think the offer, I think the offer... It's all about the money, mate. It's all about the money for the club, <laughs> you know, it's all about the money. I think it wasn't about the money for me, I think the club get more... Oh, more transfer more fee. More transfer fee from... Um, from from Wigan, but Burnley are thinking, I don't know, you know, but knowing Martinez and knowing the style of football he want to play, you know, you're thinking you're going to want to go to, to Wigan. You know, you're going to be up against it most week, but you want to try and play the style of football, you want to challenge yourself with Martinez, mm -hmm. and as a manager that I know, and I had two good years under, so it was an easy option anyway. Travelling up to Wigan, did you think back to your times at Dundee United thinking, never thought I'd get here, or did you always fancy yourself to do it? I always fancy myself to do it. I always fancy myself to do it. But I'm still thinking I'm really here. You know, I'm, I'm really here. You know, it, it, it was a journey and you're thinking, you thought I would never get here. But I still fancy myself. I just believe in myself. Yeah. You know, I just believe in myself and going training and thinking, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm in the Premier I'm, League. I'm in the yeah. Premier League. You know, and, and when I sign, obviously, when I sign and, and do an interview, um, after the interview, I was going back home. I was thinking, did I just did that? Mm -hmm. You know, did I just do an interview and saying that I'll be going at Stamford Bridge, I'll be going at Old Trafford, you know, I'll be going at the Emirates, going at Anfield, you know? So it was. It did, was you get emotion so did you get emotional? I did get emotional. I did get emotional because it's something that I wanted to, to beat, uh, obviously, wanted to, to play in the Premier League, but. I didn't believe in myself, but I didn't think, would it happen, would it now, would it, you know, coming from the, the upbringing that I come from, mm -hmm. 
it was something I set myself high standards. I, I wanted to do it. You know, guys in the, in the at Dundee United could probably tell you that I wanted to be down there. You know, and when I, when I reached there, you now it was it was a bit emotional. You know, but it was it was worth it anyway. Jake, that's important for a player to, to set high targets. It's, yeah, it is. It is important because you go reach to to a level, and I think you're happy, and and I, I don't think you would push yourself to that extent. You know, if you if you reach a level, you could see well. I could see from for me, for instance, when I reached at 36, I was thinking, nah, that's me finished. Fuck this shit, man. I'm fucking <laughs> done, man. <laughs> you know, it's 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 that's that's how easy it is to just think, ah, oh, that's it, finish. And your body just think it can't be bothered. It's freezing cold. You're on the bench, you're just thinking, ah, oh, could I fancy this? I could be in Trinidad where it's fucking 35 degrees yeah, on the yeah. beach drinking pina colada. <laughs> 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 you're the man, you know, Chase, you're so, the man. Yeah. So it's it's easy. It's yeah. easy, but you always have to set yourself high standard. If you ain't make it to that level, okay, fair enough, you give it a good go. Mm -hmm. But you always have to think, set yourself high standards and try and push because if you set yourself you're, you're in league you're in league two, you say championship is he you, you wanna go to championship. And then you reach the championship, you're thinking, fuck this, man, I'm in championship, get his cigar out. Mm -hmm. You know, but you're thinking after championship, you're thinking, nah, fuck it, premiership. Mm -hmm. So you, you go up another level, you test yourself to that extent. And that's what I keep doing, just keep pushing and pushing. Brilliant. So talk us through the Premier League debut. First game of the season, was it? No, no, first game of the season. Um, I think I was still playing for Trinidad at that time. Right. Um, I can't remember, I think my debut was against Aston Villa. I come on. Um, I think I went away. I think it was... I think the first game of the season always an international duty right, okay. or something like that. I think I went away with Trinidad and and knowing with Martinez, when I come back from international duty, it takes me about two weeks to get going. Because it's eight hour flight to go, eight hour flight, it's five hours time difference. So your body clock is it's all over the place. And I can remember coming back and Martinez saying, You'll be on the bench today. You know, and I wasn't a short starter anyway. You know, I was not a short starter. It's something that I need to because I've seen it from preseason. I knew I was not a short starter. But my, 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 I come on against Aston Villa. I did all right. I did all right. And my Premier League debut was against Chelsea. First start? First start against Chelsea. I think I did well that day. I don't mm -hmm. know if people could um, justify. I did well. Mm -hmm. And the team did well. We win 3-1, three, three I think. You know, and it was, it was my first start. And we ended up getting a penalty. Yeah, it, was, it was a story that I always, I always tell. And it was a story that would have made me or break me. And it actually broke me at, at that time. Um, we get a penalty. I think it was 2-1. We get a penalty. But for Swansea, I was always the penalty taker. Mm -hmm. I take all the penalties at Swansea. And we get, I can't remember having the ball in my hand. I can't remember who get fouled in the box or something. And I can't remember having the ball in my hand. And then Hugo, I just take the ball Who, off Ro me. Rodriguez? Hugh, I Hugo. Uh, uh, yep. Hugo just, just take the ball off me. And see if somebody take the ball off me for Swansea. I was, hey, come on. What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Give me the ball. Yeah. <laughs> I would, you know, but I didn't do that. You know, and, and obviously Hugo went and scored the penalty. And it make me and it break me. It break me because if I score that penalty, first start, first goal, I, you know, I'm flying. You know, it, it, it happened at, at various clubs. I score straight off, you know, and, and I, I happened to score maybe in February, the following year. You know, same league, same season, but I score in February. But I start nine games after that, I didn't score. And it just keep getting harder and harder mm -hmm. and harder and harder and confidence just start going lower and lower. So do you still regret not taking the ball? I still regret that. Up to this day, that is one of the moments, defining moments that in my career that I regret, you know, not taking that ball and, and finishing that penalty because I, I was the main, you know, and Graham Jones up to this, not this day, but he tell me after the ball, why you didn't take that penalty? Mm -hmm. You know, use our man. Use our man, always take all, all our penalties. Use our man. He scored. Hugo scored. But he just said, use our man, you always take the penalty. So it was a defining moment in my career where I really look back to this day and think, you know, so. Brilliant. Uh, was it harder to score goals at Wigan as well? Because it was a struggling team, whereas you played in teams that were top of the league all the time. It was a struggling team, but I got a lot of chances. I got a lot of chances, but my confidence wasn't there. My confidence, like if uh, I was at Swansea the following season, is things that would just take on my foot, left or right, and just shoot and finish. 
you know, and I was playing well, but I played, I had nine stats, so I was playing well, but ultimately as a striker, I don't want to play well, I can play rubbish all day and, and score goals, I don't give a fuck, yeah, yeah. you just want to score goals, you know, and it just keeps getting harder and harder, I get chances, I can remember at home, I won you, I won V1 with Tim Howard, but was, I was just outside the 18, and I just tried to think him, and I just think over the bar, mm -hmm. I was like, oh my, what the fuck I'm doing, <laughs> and confidence just keep going, 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 and it was just, it just getting tougher, and I can remember at, at um, Emirates, I cut inside on, on, my, on my left foot, and I hit, I hit the crossbar, and it come back out, and hit, hit the keeper and went out, I was thinking, it's just not going to happen for me. Mm -hmm. but, and I was trying so hard and, it, it, you know, sometimes you try so hard and it's just not coming off. Mm -hmm. I, I think that was, was, it was just starting to happen. Two men, it's going, things are going like this. It affect you outside football as well. Is it, can you just not stop thinking about it? As it a goal scorer, I suppose. Yeah, you just can't stop thinking about it. It just get harder. It, it just, things that you can't stop thinking about. Because you, you, you strive on scoring goals. You know, I score 16 by 26 by... 29 by 24 and to come and and, and haven't scored in in five months mm -hmm. you know so it was it was something that would martinez have a go you for no score no no he didn't have a go he pulled me in his office and he said keep doing you know you're doing well you're doing well the goal will come the goal will come but he's telling me that and in my mind i'm thinking would it really come you know i, I don't know you know because i was i was doing all right i was holding the ball up you know i was getting involved but I just wasn't scoring, and as a striker, I just wasn't happy. You know. But so the fans on your back. The fans was on my back. How the tough fans, is that as a player? It's tough. It's, it was. It was really tough. You know. Um, it's it's kind of shameful to say that you don't want the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, because fans on your back, you know, scoring. You're thinking, just get your fire in line. You know, and, and maybe refresh yourself and and go again. But it, it was difficult because obviously they buy me. You know, hoping that. I'll do well, Martinez playing me because obviously he believed in me. You know, so it was it was tough and the fans was on my back. Obviously, the stand in the Premier League is brilliant. Who, who were some of the, the top players that you played against there? Was there one that you remember watching thinking, wow? Yeah, it's, it's, um, I was at the bench at the Old Trafford, I was watching Rooney, I was just thinking, wow. I think we get beat 4-0 that day, I was just thinking. I can remember getting spanked, absolute spanked from, from Tottenham. At right. White Hart late, the first score four. I think was that was a nine 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 nil game. Nine one. I think. I think it was nine one. And I was just watching the four. Obviously, I, I, I started the game. I played the whole game. And I was just watching the four. Man, just thinking, fuck me, man. <laughs> this kid is fucking razor sharp, man. I was like thinking. <laughs> I'm fucking telling serious. I'm telling. So what, what did what did guys like him have that you never learned? I think the the mobility, right. you know, the the mobility to can move. I just watch. I can't, I can't remember if I remember that instance because he scored four in that game. But I just watching how sharp he was. I just thinking in in and around the box. I just thinking how it was just it was just surprising. It wasn't surprising to see, but it was just something that I seen that in a striker. I seen other strikers, but. You know, on TV, but just watching him live and mm -hmm. playing against him and thinking, fuck me, man. <laughs> just, so good. And I'm playing, I'm at the other end, eh? <laughs> fucking watching him going in my net. <laughs> I'm, at the fucking, I'm at the other end, man. See when you were getting dudes with Martinez crack then, or was it never, ang never no, angry? No, no, he would never crack anybody. He'd never, he's, he just, you know, I think we... Do you, think that's time, a, do you think when you're struggling, you need somebody, a manager to no, crack? Well, that's why we always have a bad cup and a good cup. Mm -hmm. We had Graham Jones. He would fucking come in and hammer every man. He's watching you, staring at you in your face, man. Fucking, uh, he would, uh, he would just, he'd just go off his head. But you do you think sometimes it needs to come from the manager? But sometimes it needs to come from the manager. But it's, it's Martinez wasn't that type. He no. just wouldn't play. You. He would right. just, he would just maybe, if he think you're not doing his job, he just wouldn't play. You. It's just simple as that. He wouldn't even come in, just room and crack. And the game's done. It's finished. Mm -hmm. We was in Sunday, we was in the next day, big meeting, personal meeting, 1v1 with him, you know, and... So you would do that on a Sunday, everyone 1v1 meeting, uh -huh. No, it, it was just, after game beat that, that much, that much right, after uh -huh. game beat that much, you just didn't show any heart, you know, I think we ended up paying the fans back for that journey as well, you know, but he, Martinez wasn't one, he just wouldn't play, mm -hmm. he wouldn't play for months, you'd, be, you'd probably be in the stands, mm -hmm. 
So it wasn't one for him to shout and, and argue about anything. Just on that wigging team, who were the characters in that team? Um, some good lads. Some good lads. Some good lads. Um, Titus Brambo was a good character. Yeah, yeah. Mario Melkert. Oh, Big Melkert. Yeah, yeah, Big Melkert. Yeah. Charles Xobia. Uh, oh, he was a good player in Xobia. He was Zobia, a good player yeah. in Zobia. He would come in, he would be out every weekend, man. He would be on it. Yeah, me, no matter the score, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> he would be out every what weekend, man. Oh, he was crazy, man. But Is there any Scottish guys that were getting that to? Um, any of the Scottish boys didn't James they? McCarter. McCarter, yeah, right? Yeah. Mc McCarty. Both of them. Both of them. No, went. no, no. The first one. Um, McCarthy, I think. Is it Mc James. McCarthy? McCarthy, right? I think. I don't know. I can't remember. Well, it's one of them. One of them. The first one I was. He was there because he came straight from Hamilton. Um, he was there at the time, and I can remember like. Me and my man on the bench and just having a chat and all that, but you know, he always know he was he was always one just to be stay quiet and just do his work, just do his job, just do it. It wasn't a surprise because he used to train so hard, just talk it every time, and and you know, always know he's special man. Mm -hmm. And he was he was seventeen at that time, seventeen. Yeah, it was McCarthy. It was McCarthy. James McCarthy. Ginger, yeah, McCarthy. Ginger, yeah, Ginger. Yeah, 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 yeah. James McCarthy. At Everton. Yeah, 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 yeah at Everton. Yeah. I just think, whoa, and he was only eighteen at that time. He was thinking, and he was just quiet. His mom used to drop him on the train and his mom pick him back up because Did he, 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 didn't, he wasn't driving at that time. Really? Yeah, yeah, his mom would drop him off? Because the bus would come back from our away game. <laughs> Who's this outside? Who's this brother? He's just thinking, oh, it's, it's James, James' mom. He's <laughs> 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 waiting because, imagine in the premiership, uh -huh. when he was that young, you know, he was just doing driving lessons or something like that. Brilliant. But his mom was going to pick him up, uh -huh. you know, after the game and because he wasn't driving, but it was good. Amazing. So, looking back on Wigan, frustrating time for you, huh? How did you find Ipswich? Uh, it was good. It was a nice place. It was it was miles away from everything. Yeah. You know, it was... It's next to Norwich and all that, isn't it? Yeah, it's next uh, to Norwich, about an hour away from Norwich. Oh, two, wow. two country roads and all that. <laughs> you know? So, it was, it was away from everything, you know. Um, one of the reasons too is going because other country man was there, Carlos Edwards. Right, okay, you know? winger. I had yeah, he, yeah, no, yeah. no, he was at he was at uh, Ipswich. Ipswich, yeah. He was, no, he was a winger. Yeah, he was a winger. winger yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was he was, a, he was a winger and he was at Ipswich, you know, and you know, me and him was in the army together and I said, Batch, think I should sign him. Yeah, yeah, Batch, we just need a goal score. If we get a goal score, we're going up 100%. I say, you sure about that, Batch? Batch, I'm telling you. <laughs> if we get a goal score, as long as you score 20 this season, Batch, we up. I'm telling you. That's what he's talking to me. <laughs> I said, all right, I said, all right. And just thinking about it, you know. And I end up signing for, for Ipswich, you know. It's, it's a nice place. Did it's, you say you were in the army again? Yeah, I was in the army in, in Trinidad and Tobago. What age? Boss. I was 18. I think I was 18. Did and you shoot anyone? No, I never shoot anyone. No, no. <laughs> 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 Never shoot anyone. So you and him were in the army together, yeah, right? Yeah, me and him was in the army together. You play football in the army? Yeah, we play football in the army together. At that time, in the army, when I grew up and obviously finished college football, the defence force, obviously is the army, there was the better team in the country, there was the best team in the country. Right. So you want to play for the best team in the country, but you needed to be a soldier first, right? So you need to join the army. You know, to, to get a game of football. To get a game of football. <laughs> <laughs> so I do uh, six months recruit training. Right. You know, dealing with weapons and you know training and combats. Uh -huh. You know, doing running nine miles and, and this and that. So me and Carlos was was in the army. Uh -huh. That must have stood you in good stead for Roy Quinto. <laughs> oh, honestly. <laughs> How was he? Oh, oh. Absolute animal. Okay. Absolute fucking animal, man. <laughs> you know what? The first game. I was, I was, at, I was at, um, living at Warrington. The first game, he said, Jace, don't worry. Just come to the, um, just come to the game. I think I'm going to be signed the, I signed the, the Monday. He said, don't worry. Just go back home and come to the game in crew. We was playing crew in a league cup or something like that. So I was on the bench. Half time, he said, Jace, get warm. So I, I went out, I come back in. He's like, Team talk. It's like Loco. Put up the tactics board. Loco set up the tactics board. He's like, see this tactics board? Fuck bang! Honestly. I don't give a fuck about this fucking shit. Honestly. Honestly. I was like thinking, that was my first game, eh? Yeah. That's my first game. I was like thinking, 
I watch across the Carlos. What the fuck is this going on here, man? Especially after you've just came through Martinez as well. Especially after my first game. I didn't even do a, a training session. Uh -huh. It's my first game, my first interaction with, with, with Keane. Uh -huh. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? After the game, Carlos just didn't worry. That's, that's normal. That's the, way we, that's the way we roll, pal. That's, that's, that's a normal thing, Jace. You get accustomed to it. I was like, that? I was like, fucking hell, man. Was he a scary guy? Uh -huh. He was just a scary guy, man. Did you ever have a go back on? I did, I did. Oh, this one, this one was a funny one, man. It's when we we going away, away games. Every time it's Man United v somebody, and he's playing. What do you mean? Well, he's he's watching Man United, me uh -huh. Juventus, right, Man okay, United uh -huh. v. I don't know. You're watching a game where he's playing. And he's put. Oh, he would put that on the telly. He put it on the telly. <laughs> no way. You put it on the telly. Hundred percent, it's on the telly, man. No way. So it's. So you're doing churning, you're shoot, doing shooting, he's like, hit the target, hit the... That's always a shout. He loves that shout. <laughs> so I was in the bus, I was in the bus, and it had one, he went through, and he, on the, on the bus, hey, you're, watching, you're watching the game, sometimes you watch sit down and we get beat or something, you're watching the game, and we actually get beat that day, and, then we, and he, he scruffed on wide, and the bus was quiet, man. Uh, and I jump up and say, hit the target! <laughs> Oh my no God, man, honestly. <laughs> what were you thinking? Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. It just it was just something at the sporting moment. <laughs> you just get up, man, and just... I just look up, man, and you just sit back down, man. Oh, honestly, man. But, <laughs> That's honestly, amazing. Oh, honestly. <laughs> so did, uh, did you find it hard to play under a guy like honestly, him? Honestly, it, it was difficult to play him. It was tough, you know, and... I can remember now, it was... It was he has hold to his whole grudges. He hold grudges. He hold with that shout I make. I can remember against, I think it was Kantop away, right? Somebody shoot and it parry and I, it comes straight to me and the keeper was running out to me and I chopped the keeper, I had the open goal to, to put the ball in it and I defender just come and slide it away. And then fucking half time, oh, like he couldn't wait to go in half time, man. <laughs> He's like, no, cut with the shoulder, hit the fucking target, no, eh? <laughs> oh, my, he absolutely ripping to me, man. Oh, and that was two weeks after, eh? That was two weeks after. After you shouted that? After uh, I shouted that. So he'd been thinking, he'd been waiting thinking, on it. He'd been waiting on it. He'd been waiting on it. Would, would, yeah. would you be scared of him to? Or would you, would you not really? No, nah, uh, I didn't scare him. No, I didn't scare him. It, it was, it's just something different that, that uh -huh. I come in with Martinez, who's the coolest guy ever, uh -huh. that to work with Keen, who's the, the, the angriest guy ever, you know? Uh, he was, he, he was he joined in training? Yeah, he was joined in training. Good. He was he was good, man. Uh -huh. He was good. I think the, the thing with Keane is because he was such a dominant player in his, his his era, he was so good on the ball. You know, sometimes when he was a coach, he just think players should be at that level, uh -huh. and he just wasn't. He would be in the boxes like we would do boxes before before games and stuff, and he'd be in the boxes. And um, I can remember Conor Wickham. Striker, he was uh, yeah, the striker. He was in our box. He was in our box and he was keep giving it away, man. He was keep he was just watching Connor and anytime he gave it the ball, maybe three, four times, he absolutely fuming keen. He just he hated to see the ball give away, man. Uh, and he just with his, with his Deodora with his socks up, shorts, it's absolutely freezing, man. And he's just, <laughs> you know, he's hard as uh, fucking. It. And he's just saying, You fucking best get your finger out. Fucking hell, you eh? Fucking give it the fucking ball so many times. I was like, and he was just a kid, the boy Connor. He was just a kid, eh? He was just he was just a kid. Um and so funny enough, we played Scott Dover away. Connor, he probably, he probably wasn't having a good game. 25 minutes off. Wow. Yeah, he's, he, he, see, the day before game, he wore on he wore on song. You know, and I remember that day before game as well. First, maybe after the Tuesday night, the, the Saturday, but we're doing set pieces on the Friday. But at every club, you do set pieces, but it, it's more, it's calm. It's mm -hmm. a, a, re, a relaxed mood. You're just doing it. You're just making sure everybody know the jobs. But I was, I was at the goal. I was on the goalie, I think. I was laughing and joking. I was thinking, why is everybody so serious, man? Uh, but I was laughing and joking. <laughs> and like, so even, even the set pieces now? Even the set uh, pieces was all serious. Guys wasn't fucking about. Everybody was making sure that everybody's know the jobs and just serious. Uh, and sometimes... In other clubs, you're do, they're just doing the delivery, but you wouldn't run and hit it because it just, you just, it's a relaxed mood. It's just set pieces, but you know your jobs. 
You know where the ball delivered, and you know where. But I was on the keeper, and I was just laughing and joking. Man. The next game, I think, was was um, Bristol City at home. A score, we win, nothing didn't say. Next week, we win, nothing didn't say. Following week, we lose. Like, you went be fucking around in fucking in, 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 on Friday now when we're doing the set pieces. Oh, I was like, whoa, my word, man. I was just thinking, <laughs> oh, he just weird for everything. <laughs> he just keep everything in here. Just... Could you never get a laugh from there? Never. Hey? Could you never get a laugh from there? Never. No. Never. Maybe, maybe once in a while. Mm -hmm. Maybe once in a while. And no, not, not really. It was the place, the episode was just eggshells. Mm -hmm. It was just the, the, the mood of the. It was just so tense. You think he'll get back into management? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he'll get back into management, but it was just intense. You know, it was just intense with, with, with Keen and I, I can remember doing... You, you, you get some laugh with him. You get yeah. some laugh. When you get a laugh, I can remember doing an interview and thing and talking about Connor. Oh, he's a good player. He's powerful. He's strong. You know, he, he could shift. You know, um, the, the, the journalist just asked me a question, mm. you know, what I'm meant to say about my player. I'm meant to say, oh, he's rubbish, he's, he's too strong, he's in the gym all the time, he's, oh, you want me to say something about So, I'm passing now, Keane's getting an interview. He's like, oh, so Jay's just be his agent then? Eh? Jay's saying all that about Conor Wickenham, why you don't just be the agent? The agent? <laughs> oh, my fucking word, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't listen. Oh, uh, honestly, man, it's, he just come up with some things. It's just spurty moment, but you get a good laugh sometimes. But it's just things, you know, that uh -huh. is, is big nose McCarthy coming. <laughs> <laughs> you like him? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have a problem with him. I said big nose McCarthy because he always say, "All you could be in the dressing room calling me a big nose, eh? <laughs> Fucking dicks." <laughs> <laughs> because he always, where is he? Yeah. Where is he going? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but he always, he said it out first, uh -huh. you know, so obviously the players, obviously, no, he have a big nose, but, you know, we just had a good laugh. I joke, you know? yeah, I brilliant. joke about it. So why'd you come back to Scotland? Um, I come up to Barnsley after, eh? Uh -huh, but I forget Barnsley. Yeah, forget Barnsley. Yeah, 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 I just want to know about Scotland, didn't <laughs> yeah. I? Um, my wife, yeah, my wife wanted to, to come back to Scotland, you know. She's from up here, yeah? Yeah, she's from, she's from up here. Whereabouts? You know. Where did you meet her? She's from Wisha. Oh, yeah, I meet her in Glasgow. I meet her in Glasgow. I meet her on a night out. Trash Tuesday? Uh, bamboo. Bamboo, right, bamboo. okay. Bamboo Sunday, bamboo. <laughs> 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 meet her, meet her, I think it was a bamboo Sunday night or something. Is it Probably. Sunday night bamboo, eh? Uh -huh, Sunday night, yeah. Oh, you know the party oh, scene, in here. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm sitting here. Yeah, that... <laughs> <laughs> but so she walked up the road and then what was it, an offer from Hamilton? Yeah, it was, it was, it was an offer from Aberdeen. Right. It was an offer from Aberdeen first. And I went up to talk to Derek McGuinness. I played with Derek McGuinness. Um, St. Johnston. Dundee United. Oh, Dundee United. Dundee United. Yeah. And St. Johnson, right. he was at St. Johnson in as well. And I was actually thinking about it, but my missus had opened a business in, in, um, in Wisher at that time when I was at, was at Bansley. So she was saying, if we come up the road and we live in, in Wisher, it's true, I was to Aberdeen anyway. May as well be down to the south. Uh -huh. So might as well be down, stay down, stay down there. I was like, so the closest thing is Hamilton. You know, so it, it, it's not like I'm knocking Aberdeen or knocking Hamilton, but it was just a realistic move for me. I was uh, 34 at that time. I just wanted to be, you know, close to my wife, close, easier, easier distance to, to travel, you know. So even if I was living to, in, in Wisher, to travel to Aberdeen, you know, and I wasn't getting any younger, mm -hmm. it, it would not make sense, you know, and then I ended up signing for, for Hamilton, you know, so it, it, that is how it's all come about. So basically your message is a boss, right? <laughs> Who is it, Alex Hill? Oh, oh <laughs> Basically, she's the boss then. <laughs> okay, all right. You've finished yeah. highest in the championship. You played Hibs, yeah. who were bottom of the, the, the Premier League. Yeah. Going into the two games, did you again think you could beat Hibs over the two legs? Because that's some good players, Hibs, didn't they? That's some good players. That's some good players, but I think they were struggling at that time, mm. though. They were the fans. Yeah, carried up. they were struggling at that time. And we know we could beat them because we know we could actually do something at their place because we know if we keep them tied maybe 20 minutes, the fans will go on the back. Mm. You know, um, I think we played Fall Cook, a home and away leg, and I was 34 that time. I couldn't play two games in one week. And I tell the gaffer, I did play Fall Cook home and away, and Hibs was 
It was maybe the Tuesday. Yeah. So I couldn't play. I couldn't play. I said, Gaffa, if I play, I'll be there physically. I'll be there. But mentally, I'm a, you know, my, my body wouldn't be able to take it. You know, and he said, oh, fair enough. And he ended up, I, was, I think I was in the stand or something, and he ended up um, getting beat 2-0. Yeah. You know, the first leg. Jason Cummins scored, didn't he? I was at the game. Yeah, was yeah. yeah this is um, Cummins. And he, he was flying at that time mm -hmm. as well, you know, but obviously the team wasn't doing that well. And I think, it, I think we have a chance here. I'm talking to, I think I talked to the press as well, you know, and tell them we have a chance here. Because there wasn't score, much in the game, was there, for a 2-0 game? It wasn't, much, wasn't, much, it wasn't in much in the game. It wasn't much in the game. Me watching from the stands thinking it wasn't much in the game and, and thinking, if we can score the first goal, first 20 minutes, the fans will get on their back. You know, we, we, we know that, I, I said that, I do press conference and I said that before, I tell, that, tell the, the, um, Alex Neal that, I even tell the players that because I was one of the senior players in the dressing room, if not the senior players, player. You know, and it has so happened, we went and we scored in the first 15 minutes or something like that. You know, and the fans was absolutely going mental. The fans was going crazy, just booing. Every time they touch the ball, every time they make two or three passes, and that works in our favor. Mm. You know, we just thinking oh, our tail's going up. You know, and, and so happened, we, we end up scoring in the last, in the 92nd minute. How was that feeling, brilliant? Oh, it was, it was absolutely brilliant. I think it was, Ziggy Gordon to me, me to Tony Andrew, and that take it to, to, to extra time. You know, he was just thinking, it, just thinking, it, would it come? Would it come? Scoring in 92nd or 93rd minute, and we take it to extra time. You know, and take it to extra time. Obviously, it was end up nil nil, and we go to penalties. To even take it to that far, we was absolutely buzzing. Mm -hmm. You know, because coming from two nil, a Premiership team, big club, but it's something that we was looking forward to. We, we, we think we had a chance. I know I had a chance. I don't know if the guys probably thinking that, but I try to say, listen, we have a chance here, guys. We have a chance. We have a chance. You know, and obviously we went on penalty shootout. It was, it was a amazing feeling, man. It was a great feeling for See, the See, even the career you've had, was that one of the best moments of your career? It was one of the best moments in my career. Knowing that I was an underdog going into the game, hmm. you know, and nobody gave us a chance. Did you give us a chance? No, I thought you'd get humped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding on me. I knew you would do it. I knew you would do it. So did you round it all off with the last nightclub I mentioned, Hamilton Palace? <laughs> no, no. Was it a good party after it? It was a good party. I think we went, um, we went all that night. Um, was it on the West End? West End, oh nice. Um, it's a club on the West Did End. Did you pay for the boys? Obviously, you paid uh, for no, the No, no, the club. The club, right? Yeah, okay. the, club, the club ended up getting us a night out on, on a Saturday night. Um, funny enough, I was going to Trinidad that morning, the Sunday morning. You know, um, the club obviously looked after us and, you know, gave us a treat, you know, and obviously the boys were steaming and, you know, that, the mm. rest is history, really. Brilliant, mate. Yeah. And now, coaching. Is that obviously what you want to do? Manager, maybe as well? Um, I just take him one step at a time, to be fair, really. Um, as I say, I come back from Trinidad in 2017, last year. And coaching, this is my second year now in coaching. You know, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it as, as much as possible. Going in, it's just something that maybe you would say that all I know, really. You know, just being around football. You know, growing up all my life is just football. So now being around football, being around the dressing room, still, still get a buzz on a Saturday. It's just something being in the dressing room and just being involved, you know, trying to talk to players, as I said earlier on. You know, it's, it's still a buzz that I get. So coaching now is it's just something that I go out and, and try to enjoy as much as possible. So I wouldn't say management, maybe in the long run, but now I'm just trying to, because when it comes to management, the enjoyment's out the window. Uh -huh, it's stress. <laughs> it's stress, uh -huh. you know. One thing you always say to them though, hit the target. Hit the target. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Cheers, right, mate. Cheers, Thank man. you. <laughs>